First, I want to give a company disclaimer. Truth and Deuce is not associated with any company, nor was Truth and Deuce endorsed, paid, or compensated any financial income to share the information within this presentation. Truth and Deuce does not guarantee any income shown in this presentation, nor does Truth and Deuce participate in the projections of income with the intent to entice, persuade, or manipulate any individual toward the decision. just want to make that clear. He just quit. He just quit. And he says, what? We have to keep you afraid in order to keep you paying your taxes. And that's what my goal is. This is my favorite. You get a raise every time you can legitimately avoid paying a tax on something. Right. And see, that's a beautiful quote when you look at it. You see, legitimately is the word I want everybody to focus on. <laughs> you see, legally, these things are legal for us if we just know that. And see, that's very important. So what is this power, Rodney? What is this power of the home-based business that you keep speaking of? And what I want to do is ask some of my guests. You don't mind me asking, if you look at this list of expenses, how many of those are you currently incurring? Yes, ma'am. Insurance, health, food, 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 some of those. Now here's the magic question I ask. How many are you writing off on your taxes? <laughs> she said, Is that we can't thing? hear her. <laughs> you see, a lot of people are not around. And that's what I want. If you're in the room today, look at this list. How many are you currently incurring? And then I ask that magic question. How many are you writing off on your taxes? And see, there are other deductions that come along with it. And that's the goal. You see, that's my goal today. That's mine and my wife's goal. We go across the country, literally, passing this message, teaching people how to convert their everyday living expenses to tax-deductible write-offs legally. And it's very important that I stress legal because this is law. This is not a tax scam or a tax loop that I'm up here teaching. This is not a get-over scheme. This is actual tax law and tax code that you're entitled to as home-based business owners. Mm -hmm. And you are legally entitled to them, but you just don't know. And see, that's what our mission is. This is what we do. That's what Truth and Do stands for. We're going to force it on you, even if you don't know. We're going to force this truth into your mind. And so we want, the first thing I want to do is talk about a couple of what I call the big lies. And that is the red flag versus the audit. You see, these are two terms that a lot of people just aren't aware of. And there are stigmas attached that make you act a certain way. So I want to define them. What is a red flag? A red flag is no more than a tax deduction or a tax credit that bounces your return out of the computer and invites an IRS owner. Just that simple. That's all the red flag. But in order to receive a red flag, you have to violate one of these four rules. One of these four. You see, you hear your tax professional say all the time, hey, that's going to raise red flags. Let's not do that. That might raise red flags. And then if you look at the four reasons, expensive credits not associated with your business. Items of lavish or extravagant nature for personal or recreational use. Large deductions out of line with the amount of income you're reporting. An abusive use of deductions or credits associated with your business. If you're not doing one of those violations, then it's not going to raise a red flag. And so Rodney will be the first person to let you know in the tax world, if you hear a tax professional say red flag, it's cold for I don't know how to do those taxes. <laughs> and see, that's when you hear a person say, it's going to raise red flags. The best question to ask is, show me how in black and white. Because see, this is not our opinion. This is nothing we're guessing. It's all in black and white what we can and cannot do. So there's no such thing as a red flag without documentation to show me. Show me why I can't, and then I'll believe you. And so if you hear that red flag, usually it means we don't know how to do those taxes. And so it's very important that you do that. Audit. What is an audit? An audit is no more than the IRS looking to prove that the information on the return is accurate, the deduction is legal, and that the income is honestly stated. This is what an audit is. Is that a bad thing? Does that sound bad? It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound bad. But, doesn't sound bad. <laughs> but see, the stigma is stuck on you right now. All you think is audit is bad. But in definition, it doesn't sound bad. It's really not bad. But see, guess what? The IRS is aware too that there's a stigma on this word. So you know what they did? They changed it. They no longer conduct audits. They, now the procedure is called conducting examinations. So if you receive a letter saying we're going to conduct an examination, you're being audited. And a lot of people just not aware of it. This is new information that they're doing because of the stigma. 
Well, what I want you to give you some numbers of business owners who were audited recently. If you made under $25,000, there's a 1.2% chance that you'll be audited. And just to give you the round numbers of the numbers that we're dealing with, we're talking about 80 million business owners in America. Of 80 million, there's a 1.2% chance that you'll be audited from a base business owner. If you happen to make over 200,000 or more, there's a 3.3% chance that you'll be audited. Their audit is very <coughs> low numbers, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to understand they are very low numbers to be audited. And so audit is not a bad thing. And, and this is what I concluded and I came up with. Unless what? Unless you're lying. Yes. You see, and that's what Rodney stresses. There is no reason to lie when you're already incurring these expenses anyway. Mm. You see, everyone drove here today, you already spent gas. You already drove miles. But how many of those get to write them off on their taxes? And see, that's what we're here to teach you. As long as you don't lie, please don't be afraid of an audit. We invite an audit because we have proper documentation. You see, documentation is key. You see, they don't want to talk to me or you. They just want to see the receipts in the documentation. And so we make sure we plot that. But what makes this problem work? I think it's very important that people understand taxable income is what makes it work. How many of us in here currently have a job? Now, see, this is the secret in your income that you cannot unlock. And see, a lot of tax professionals, if you're sitting here and this information I'm saying to you is new, then your tax professional is behind. You see, as tax professionals, we have two duties. That's to get you a bigger refund or at least put you in position for one. And that means we have to grow with information. And you, this should not be new information to you. And this is why I always share this information. This is the secret to your income. This is what unlocks your ability to increase your refund. Let's say you make 40000 This is your AGI. This is how much you make for the year. Let's say you make 40000 What's going to happen is you qualify for two deductions automatically. You're not going to be taxed on the entire $40,000. If you do not itemize, they will give you a standard deduction of $5,800. And if you're just claiming yourself as an individual exemption, you get $3,700 per person. That means $9,500 will be taken off of the income that's being taxed. And the great thing about it, that leaves us $30,500. Now, as a tax professional, it's my job to get this to zero. As that number goes to zero, it increases your refund. And so we always tell people the more taxable income you have, the greater your opportunity to increase your refund. But here's the key about this. This is what the tax professionals don't understand. In the IRS code, it says your expenses cannot exceed your taxable income. You see, if you own a business and you say, hey, I took off losses, I spent a lot of money on my business, it can't exceed that $30,500. If we put 30501 we're going to invite an exam examination. <laughs> we're going to have an examination. But as long as we take it to zero, ladies and gentlemen, you can legally by law if you have those expenses and documentation. Now, I think it's important that you understand that. Now, let's go over what credits and deductions actually do for you. You see, a lot of people go in and they sit down and they say, hey, you're getting a nice refund. And they say, hey, I'm just happy. I want the refund good, I'm happy. I don't care what happened. But I want to teach you what actually makes up that refund. I want to show you how it works. What is a deduction? It's an expense associated with your business that qualifies for the deduction. In formula, it's your income minus that deduction. And I want to make it clear. Let's say you make $40,000 and you're in the 15% bracket. What this means is you roughly owe the IRS $6,000. This is what you owe for earning $40,000. That's what, like Shanaza said, if you have a job, you're actually paying for that job. Any money you make with that job, you have to pay. So if you receive a $1,000 deduction, I know everyone in here has spent over $1,000 in gas for the year. So that qualifies you for all of your gas is tax deductible. Well, let's say you only spent up to $1,000 in gas, and we're going to write off the gas. What this does, in essence, is we'll take the $1,000 away from the 40,000. And what will happen is you'll have a new AGI of 39,000. And what they'll do is tax that bracket now. And this is how you lower your liability. Now you're down $150 for 1,000. Now remember that 30,000? If I take all 30,000 from your 40,000, your liability will not only go to zero, it'll go to the grid, to the black. And now you'll start to receive. But if you're already receiving, ladies and gentlemen, this adds to your refund. And so when we say, hey, 
a $200 purchase, $300 purchase can literally add $5,000 to your refund. We mean that. And before I go any further, it's very important. Sometimes, you know, I say that and people will, well, Rodney, you know, do you have somebody that did that? Can you, can you, can you prove it? And so I'm fortunate to say here in Atlanta, because Truth and Deuce has expanded here in Atlanta, I have a testimony today. If we would, I think everybody familiar with it. Mr. Curtis, if you please would, stand up and give it to you. Everybody give Curtis a hand. your experience last year and how this business helped you this year. I think it's important. Okay, um, I started this business in it was like um, you can't hear October yeah, you last year. October 2011. And when I found out, I was just not a regular um, tax person. So, she, you know, she asked for some papers and we didn't give paper. But after she really got to go through everything with us, she said, you know, we didn't earn enough money to get back anything much. I think um, when, when it comes to, when everything um, um, was summed up, you get something like three, two hundred and fifty five dollars They got $355. Right. And, <laughs> and, it's, yeah, and it's documented. <laughs> so, you know, we are about, um, you know, using the right person. So I tell my wife, honey, we got to get somebody who know about the, the own this business. So um, this person leave a, a lot of money on the table, I don't know, but I just feel like something wasn't right. So this year we said, well, we got to find an expert. And Mr. Rodney and his wife was the, <laughs> was the savior in that, in, in that aspect. He did our tax, we got through all the paperwork and stuff like that, and at the end of it, we're, um, after everything was finished, we end up with over 7,000. Friends that they use or company that they use previously. If they're not an expert, you're gonna lose money. So the bottom line just get someone with a specialty <coughs> and know the travel business and home based business and believe me, they will get everything that you, you deserve. All right. And the great thing about it is that was their experiences. I didn't have to do any magic, I didn't whip anything, I didn't bless him, I didn't do anything. I took his everyday expenses and used them properly. You see, just one second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tax breaks. What are credits? What are credits? The first thing I want you to understand about credits is they're just meant to stimulate the economy. You see, credits are not written in stone. They don't come back every year. A lot of times you go into your tax profession and say, hey, I got more than that last year. Well, there were some credits that you qualify for that are taken away. Yeah. Yeah. Case in point, if you took the education credit last year, you received $2,000. Well, over will cut it in half. If you took the education credit this year, you only got $1,000. And so when you go to your $7,000 refund last year, $6,000 refund this year. You look at your tax professional and say, hey, what are you doing different? You messing up when there were credits that you don't qualify for anymore. And so I want people to understand how the credit works for you. But the credit is great because the credit comes directly from your tax liability. Mm. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're the $40,000 and you owe $6,000 again. And you receive a $1,000 credit. I love asking this question. How many in our house have light bulbs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people have these new lights. A lot of people don't have a light bulb. Right. And uh, how many of us understand that the going green is a movement now? Oh, yeah. Do you know they have a credits for it? Mm -hmm. Right. If you purchase a certain amount and make that space that we signify as business green, you receive a $1,000 energy efficient credit. Wow. That's a thousand dollars. Well, how much the bulbs cost? If you don't mind me asking. I'm gonna sell at um, Home Depot. Four pack for two ninety seven. Two ninety seven. A four pack. Sell. That's a nice investment for a thousand dollars credit. You see, just change your bulbs out. You see that that, that, that part of your house, that area that we use for business, is now green. Yes, it is. And that qualifies you for energy efficient credit. Did your tax professional share that with you last no. year? No. <laughs> Miss Credit, these are, this is information, this is our job to go find credits that can help you. And it's very important that you find the right person. Let me show you how the credit works. Let's say you owe that 6000 The credit comes away from your liability. 
not giving you a new AGI. Now your debt is five thousand. Mm. You see, two dollars and ninety-seven cents. Mm -hmm. On sale. Thousand dollar credit. <laughs> <laughs> Smart business. <owner. laughs> Hate you missed it. <laughs> That's the reality. That's the reality of it. Now you see how credits and deductions can really lower your liability? Oh yeah. I mean really to the point if you don't, oh guess what? This is all gonna be added to what you used to receive. You see, credit curtains. What he said in essence was last year I got three hundred and fifty-five dollars. This year I got seventy five hundred dollars. From the same situation, wow. his business was on his taxes last year, but he didn't get everything that he was supposed to receive. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, that's seventy-two hundred dollar difference. Wow. You think that won't help his home? <laughs> From his everyday living expenses, I didn't do nothing extra. Curtis, did y'all spend gas? Yes. Did y'all have a light bill? Yes. A water bill? Yes. Mortgage interest? Yes. We'll write that off twice, and I'll show you that. But I want you to understand, credits are more valuable, true indeed. But you have to understand that they're only created to stimulate the economy. Meaning that they change year to year. But deductions are written in stone. You see, my goal is to show you how to start evolving and revolving your life around those deductions. And so that everything that you do now is in the name of business and tax deductible. And I think that's very important. But your home has a place of business. In order to deduct the expenses related to your home, this is what the IRS says. You must carry on a bona fide business. To qualify to claim the expenses using your home, there are a few things that they want you to do. One, it must be your principal place of business. Check. A place where you meet and deal with customers in the normal course of your trade. Check. And a separate structure you use in connection with the trade or business. In English, that's just the biggest room in your home. And you see, this is what we're going to use. That room, which I always say to your living room, is the biggest one, is where you will conduct business. And everything in that area is tax deductible. Let's go over this. A portion of your rent, electricity, gas, water, home, internet, cable, security, furniture, house cleaning, all of this is tax deductible. Mortgage interest, real estate taxes, insurance, rent. Are you, this, do you currently have a mortgage interest? Yes, and guess what you do? You pay it with the bank, correct? On the 1098. And then you file it on the Schedule A. But the Schedule A only gives you pennies as opposed to the 8829. See, a lot of people don't realize you can also file it on the 8829 as well. One payment written off twice for making a smart decision. This is what we call a double deduction. Did your tax professional make you aware of that? You see, it's very important that you know about these advantages so you can take advantage. And this is not mixed. This is law for you. What about that vehicle? That's not your car anymore. You see, I want you to understand that's now a company vehicle. You see, when you really look at it, guess what? You see these people riding to the square magnets on the car? Guess why? Those magnets pay for that car. You see, that's an advertising. And guess what? Like I always tell my wife, when you feel like being grown, mm -hmm. you can just take them out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great thing to do. This is some of us with the beautiful beans. It's like Shaniza. Put the sign so we can make it a company vehicle. But when you want to step out, go ahead and take the magnets off. They're not watching. They're not watching. Go ahead and take them off and make it a beans. That's right. But that's right. until then, the eight to nine hundred most beans is cost a month to pay for. It's tax deductible, as long as those signs on there. Because see, that's not your car. That's a company vehicle now. Mm. And everything, the signs, I think on Vistaprint right now, they have a buy one, get one free. $32, a $40 expense can make your car note tax deductible. If you just know. You see, if you just know. What's the difference between the rich? We say what they know and what they buy. Mm. And you see, I want you to understand that. What about this? Identify your circumstances. Mileage law. Did you know business owners are earning 50 cents, cents a mile now? Yeah. You see, last year you received, if you have a job right now, I want you to understand that $40 is coming out of your check every two weeks whether you like it or not. You see, they went from payroll taxes went back up yeah. from 4.2% back to 6.2. So that's about $38.67 every two weeks whether you like it or not. And the question I ask is, what is your tax strategy? Mm -hmm. What do you do to offset those taxes? You see, we make them tax deductible. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You see, that's what the business owners, guess what? We were earning 55 cents last year. Now we're earning 50 cents. We got to increase. Y'all got to increase in taxes. <laughs> we got to increase in benefits. So it's very important that you become a business owner and keep a good mileage off. Your gas, the repairs, the insurance, the car washes, all changes, parking, tolls. Mm. All of this is tax deductible as a business owner and with the company vehicle. Make your car your company vehicle. I think it's important that we make the mileage work for you. They, they got an app for that too called TripLog. Oh, I got a mileage bug mileage. app. Oh, it's a bunch of apps. If you're into technology, there's a few apps out there that you can just hit start in a track. And when you get there, hit stop. It's done. And then if you print some Excel, you can email it to yourself and print it off and that documentation for your mileage. Accept it. It's a great way, but you can also go to your spiral notebook and <laughs> just write in a chart. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that's just as good. It's just as good. It does nothing fancy. If you just want to do it, they just want documentation. You see, documentation beats conversation every time with the IRS. They don't want to hear nothing from me or you. They're going to say, Rodney, can you tell your clients and mail this mileage law? And if you send something crispy, you tried to back and do everything, they're going to know. But if you send something like that you've been doing all year, they're going to accept the miles. So it's important. And let me show you how. There's a thing called local transportation costs that you qualify for. And this is cost of work-related travel within your tax home. What is work-related as a travel agent? Mm. Anywhere we go. <laughs> you see? Anywhere we go, we're going to pass a card and share our business, correct? Right. So anywhere you go is work-related. So I want you to understand what your tax home is. See, this is the important part. What is your tax home? Your entire city or general area of your regular place of business. Atlanta, and everything in surrounding areas, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> tax deductible. Wow. This is your tax home. Let me give you an example. You go to work every day. You drive to work every day. This is home, this is work. Is there a Starbucks or a McDonald's somewhere close across the street from your job? A Burger King. Right. <laughs> Let's say this is Burger King. She said this is Starbucks there as well. Now, if you drive from home to that Starbucks every day, you think you could stop and come in, introduce yourself, and pass out a business card? You think you could do that? Well, let me show you what this could do. You see, this is why it's very important. I want everybody to repeat this after me. Write it down. Write, write it, down. it down. You see, it's very important when you leave home, you write it down. Because if you just go to that Burger King, cross the street from your job, and have a conversation, when you get to the Burger King, let's repeat again. Write, write it down. down. When you get to the Burger King, write it down. And what I want you to understand, the mile from home to the Burger King is business miles. You see, this is the normal course. You take this trip every day anyway. Can I show you how to make some money off an of everyday trip? <laughs> you see, that's what I want to show you. If you turn from home to the McDonald's, your normal course is in travel. See, this is the normal course in travel that I go every day as well. I stop here every day and I share my information. And then I go across the street to my job and guess what that is? A person. We can't write the personal miles off, but we can write the business miles. Right. So I want the, the every day going to your job can pay you as a home business owner. And I want you to understand that this is legal and law. Just like you said, it's just that simple. You write destination, the business purpose, the start, the stop, and the total. And you multiply 56 cents times 60 miles, that was a great trip for work every day. You see, and what's key is writing it down. You see, I hear people tell me that all the time. Well, I, I, I calculated it. Well, calculation is not what I needed. I need documentation of you making this trip every day. If you would just write it down, it's yours. And that's not, a, I mean, when I say thousands, I mean thousands of dollars with the miles paid. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that you get that. But look at the expenses that you qualify for. Car washes, mileage, maintenance, insurance, oil changes, tires, fuel. All in all, if you become a self-employed business owner. You see, it's very important that you become and make that your company vehicle. <laughs> you see, that's not your car. When you leave here today, right? I want you to understand that that's not my point. This is a public video. And everything associated, associated with it is packed together. What about your meals and entertainment? Skiing, hunting, fishing trips, movies. I don't do any of that but the movies. But guess what? I know people who do. And when you can offer those services tax deductible, if you entertain those, isn't as a travel agent, don't I need to get the experience before I refer it to you? 
And see, that makes my business related. So when I go to the movies, I have to go get the experience. I have to eat the popcorn. I have to do everything that I think you may do in order for me to refer it. But guess what mine is? That's deductible. In the name of what? Business. And that's what I want you to understand. In the name of business is what I want you to understand. What is it? Line of it's <laughs> Oh, I love it. Your music, your entertainment, all of this in the realm of business should create two things. This is what the IRS say, one of the three things they want when you write off your meals and entertainment. They want to make sure that it generates business. It creates a good will or thank employees for a job. Well done. I'm going to just ask you, sir, who's going to be your first employer in your company? Of course. You think you can thank yourself for a job well done? They're right off the meal. They're right off the night. And you see, they go your second employee. You think you can thank your employee for a job well done and make it tax deductible? All of us can. And see, this is what I want you to understand. You will be your first employee, making yourself and everything you do tax deductible legally. And see, that's very important. Here's the two tests that they say, either a directly related test in which they want to make the other business transacted, or the reason for conducting the business. And, and what I say with that is merely a spreadsheet. You know, usually when you go to a meeting or something, you sign in. You just let it know what it's for. A lot of times you can just do that. Or if you're out at a restaurant, you write good lead or hot lead on the receipt and take a picture of it. Documentation that this was a good conversation about business. It just they don't want to know who it's with. Associated test, where they say that you share held the business discussion and it has to be held in the same day. Simple. Let's eat, enjoy ourselves, and we'll discuss business later. We have 24 hours. You see, that's a great thing. This is law. This is not my opinion. I'm teaching you what's law. This is everything you're entitled to. And here's one of my favorites. Did you know this? If you can show the purpose of the spouse, it's clearly for business. The spouse costs the tax deductible. Now, see, did y'all see Gina up here today introduce us? Yes. So she did participate. I'm going to write out. You see, all the expenses And then you notice that it says spouse, she can write me off too. And so I don't want y'all to think the man can just write the woman off. It says spouse. If the woman is working, you can write your husband off too. You can write him off. These are the things, this is our job. You should know these things. You should not be a surprise. I'm saying the uniform. You see, Taco Bell wear Taco Bell. What do you wear? That's a nice business uniform for your company. Tax deductible. You see, and then guess what? You get to change four uniforms, five uniforms every quarter. Mm. You know, it's four quarters in a year. That's 20 outfits and 20 pairs of shoes. That's tax deductible. You see? That's 20 outfits and 20. Let me make it in English so everybody understands. That's 20 outfits and 20 pairs of shoes. That's tax deductible. In the name of what? Business. And see, I want you to don't just go around saying, I write my clothes off. I write my shoes off. No, make it clear. And you know, you're going to hear another tax professional say, yeah, you have to have your, your company stitched on the clothes. Well, Rodney says, get you a pen. <laughs> <laughs> and then on when you represent the company, and when you feel like being grown, what do we do? Guess <laughs> <laughs> what? Now that our money code is tax deductible, now that Gucci, whatever you decide to choose, is tax deductible. Hey, In the name of what? <laughs> <laughs> Phone is that? My business. This business cell phone, that's not yours. Mm. Don't raise your hand like it's yours, it's not yours, it belongs to the company. That's right. Yes, indeed. What about your haircut? Getting your hair done every week. Mm -hmm. Hey, lady, she said, I go twice a week. Great. <laughs> as long as you save your receipt, it's, mm. it's tax deductible. And yeah. a lot of people say, I don't like keeping receipts. If you have a debit card, it's just as great. Because mm -hmm. they save it for you at the bank. Yes, right. And see, so you can go in with your proudest look. I always tell everybody, look proud. They say, I'd like an activity report for the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> They'll hurry up and they'll please involve. No problem. No problem, cause like courtesy, it may bring me seven thousand extra. Mm -hmm. See, I'll spend fifteen bucks for seven thousand extra. That's right. You see, I always like to say up to five thousand worth the benefits for a three hundred dollar decision. But as we see, you can go past five thousand easy if you have the documentation. And see, that's very important. And I always share that. What about entertainment? Again, you have to get that experience before you refer a travel agent. 
So guess what? It's tax deductible. Gifts, my favorite. I always, I have to pick on somebody. What does Oprah do every year? Give away. In December. When? When does she give it away? Every year in December. Why don't she do it in March? Why not in February? You know why she do it in December? What's after December? <laughs> Oprah got smart accountants. See, what I want you to know, Oprah makes about $2.2 billion. And if we saw our tax example, if, if she's in a 15% bracket, that means about at least $2.237 million in taxes she owes. Mm -hmm. And see, the IRS got two rules. Spend it or give it to us. But when you spend it, you got to spend it what? In the name of business. So Oprah and $237 million trying to blank it out, she has to what? She give 100 houses away, 100 cars, Everybody in the audience get an iPad. And you're like, why is she just giving this stuff away? <laughs> but what do they do in return? She ran it off. She get the magazines. No, I'm saying the customers. They're going to buy the magazine. They're going to leave it on the own channel all day. You see? They're going to they buy her mugs, her cups. They're going to make Oprah richer. And what is Oprah doing? Lowering her tax liability. See, I'm lowering my liability and you making me richer. And see, why you not doing the same? Because see, what Rodney wants you to understand is Oprah filed on the same form that you filed on. There's no special Oprah form. There's no Schedule C for Oprah. No, she files on the same forms that you file on. She qualifies for the same 24 categories and the same 500 deductions you do. She just got a few more zeros than us. That's it. <laughs> but we, we come it. We come it, Oprah. We come it. <laughs> wrote the Christmas out this year. Mm. I did. You see? <laughs> Put your business card on the gift. And who is that from? My business. Oh, not from Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> it's not from Rodney. It's from my company. And see, it's tax deductible. And then you may hear a tax professional say, but you only get up to $25. And guess what? Rodney's going to tell you again. Remember, how are you categorize it? You think Oprah is categorizing an iPad as a business gift and only want $25 back on an $800 gift? Mm -hmm. No. She advertised, categorize it as a promotional item. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And on promotional items, you get 100% of your money back. Yeah. 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 So let's yeah. give out some promotional stuff for our company this year. Yeah. Yeah. Put your company on the real pretty. See if you can get some gift paper wrapped in your company this year. <laughs> and, and give that away and let it be from the company. But mm -hmm. write your Christmas off. You see, I want to teach you how to get some of that money back while blessing somebody at the same time. This is not just for Oprah. This is for the ones that know. That's right. And see, that's what's key. Business lunch. Anytime you eat, please know that it's tax deductible. I love to eat. As long as there are no children meals or anyone under 18, because you can't prospect your business to anyone 18. Mm. But if you can not have any kid meals on there, I guarantee you it's tax deductible. Mm -hmm. You see, you receive a portion of that back as well. So when you eat, everything you do, ladies and gentlemen, is the Donald Trump syndrome. I mean, who else can file bankruptcy one day and be a billionaire the next day? <laughs> you see, it's impossible how these wives, he knows. So I just want to teach you how to live tax-free like him. And do the same thing, your clothes, your shoes, everything. It make yourself remain all the time. And this is the key word that I always stress. Remain in the pursuit of profit. You see, that's the goal. As long as you're in pursuit of profit, that expense is tax deductible. Here's one of my favorites. Hire your kids. How many of you are parents in here today? My you employees see? right here. Nice. Nice. <laughs> parents. If they're seven and 17, you can hire them. You see, and receive up to a $5,800 credit. Mm. Tax free. Because why? The kid doesn't have to file. Mm -hmm. Your child doesn't have to file taxes, but you get the benefit. Now, ain't that a great situation? <laughs> Did your tax professional share that with you? No. Nope. You see, I say that every time. Because I want you to understand this is law, this is legal, this is black and white. This is not Rodney's opinion. This is something you're entitled to if you take advantage. It's a couple things the IRS say they want you to have. A W-4 on file. You can print that for free on IRS.gov. And they want you to provide a 1099 that you paid the child. And you can get those anywhere for about what, six dollars we saw it? I think about a pack of 50, like six bucks. Or you can download them online, just put 1099 in Google, they can send you a thousand websites. You can do them like for five or six dollars. You can do one. And this is all it is. You just tear off the one copy for the child, 
they'll throw it away, and you take your copy to your tax professional. It's saying I pay fifteen hundred in contract labor to my child, mm -hmm. and it's tax deductible for you. Just that simple. If you'll take those two steps, and see, this is not my opinion. Again, this is law. This is everything you qualify for. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it understood, ladies and gentlemen, the power of the home-based business is very strong. You see, in essence, what we're asking you to do is make a financial decision for your future. You see, we want you to understand this is not just a business. This is a business that you can leave a legacy, that you can pass on to the little ones, and they can carry this on. And I want you to understand this is literally a $300 decision for thousands. If I ask you, sir, if I had $5,000 in this hand, would you give me $300 for it? Mm -hmm. so give you $300? For this $5,000 yeah, in my hand. Absolutely. Well, I have to give it to you in January, though. Mm -hmm. You see, that changes the situation. <laughs> <laughs> ain't said, hold on, hold on. But while I wait till January to give you this $5,000, i am going to give you this travel agency mm -hmm. online. And you. <laughs> She talked about travel. Rodney Dunn already gave away the price. It's almost an insult to think about it, right? $250 plus your first month's franchising fees, and you own 